Hi there, uh, my name's Keith Phelps, I'm the head launcher for the Shore and Lifeboat and also the Lifeboat Visits Officer. So operationally I'm responsible for the launch and recovery of the all-weather lifeboat and for helping out with the launch and recovery of the inshore lifeboat. And for the visits um, I coordinate the 16 new volunteers that we've got on station who are going to be here Monday to Sunday um, to show you around the station and to talk to you about what the lifeboat does, why we do it and how it's done. You're in the main boat hall at the station now uh, with the all-weather lifeboat which is a Tamar lifeboat. It's the most modern kick-ass lifeboat that the RNLI have got. Um, it's got every bell and every whistle possible. Uh, it, and out at sea it will go at 25 knots. It carries a crew um, of seven or eight, could be up to a dozen. It could go to sea with two or three people on board. Just depends on the urgency of the situation and how quickly it needs to launch. Fully computer operated, but also able to operate without any of the computers working, just on manual controls. The slipway here at Shoreham is the second steepest in the country. In fact, it may even be the sleep steepest now because the back of the new slipway is a metre higher than it was. The eastern arm walkway, which you can see in front of you, is the position where the flagman will go prior to a launch. His job is to watch the um, close environment of the station in the river to make sure there are no swimmers around or, or small craft who won't have got the message on the radio that the lifeboat's launching. Providing he keeps his red flag out of sight, the lifeboat will then launch on instruction from the coxswain. OK, this is the refuelling rig where we can refuel the boat once it comes back onto station. Uh, the fuel tanks are always kept topped right up so the boat's ready for any emergency and any duration task. We have 10,000 gallons of fuel on the station um, to supply the boat. We're very fortunate at Shoreham because the fuel for the lifeboat is all provided to us free by Texaco. Um, that's been the case for many years since one of the Mexico managers was rescued at sea by the lifeboat. And so this is the winch that we use for the launch and recovery operation. Very simple operation, extremely powerful. We move to the front of the winch, to the boat end of it. You can see the, the bits and pieces that make it work. Here we have the main winch rope which is currently under tension, as you see, that's taking the whole weight of the lifeboat at the moment. And that's going through this hook and onto this part, which is where the hook attaches to the boat, and that's called the sea catch. The boat's also secondary support is this, which is the stern safety strap. So if anything happened to the winch rope, the weight of the lifeboat will be held on that. Uh, so we're quite happy while we've got two supports on the boat for people to walk in front of the boat without any danger to them. When we're launching the boat, the boat is pulled back using the winch. The safety strap is removed and that comes out through there. The boat is lowered until it tilts on the keel way and, and it's level with the keel way. Um, the safety catch there is removed and the engines will be started. At that point the boat's ready to go and all that's required is a very hard pull on that rope and that releases the sea catch which works like a clamshell over a rod on the back of the boat and the boat will be gone. Uh, when it hits the water at low water uh, the boat will be doing about 30 miles an hour. This is the kit for the all-weather lifeboat. So these are waterproofs um, with a life jacket on them and with flares attached to the life jacket in case the crewman needs them to attract attention. Boots for the crew are on the floor there. 
along with one of the models that we're renovating to go into the front lobby fairly soon. Around this side of the room are bunny suits which go on for the inshore lifeboat crew and these go on under their dry suits to keep them warm. It's those there and then on to the inshore lifeboat dry suits which are all ready for them there, each of them marked ready for the particular crew member. I'm sorry about my pager going off, that's the launch, um, it's the system test which runs at this time once a week, so that's all that is. Uh, moving around this way, we've got lots more inshore lifeboat dry suits, one for each crew member. Uh, we've got a dehumidifier at the end here so they get nice and dry. And then we've got a shower room here, which is mostly used for warming up casualties that are brought in from the sea. This area here are the crew helmets, again all marked with their initials so they know which one to grab hold of. Uh, same helmets for the inshore boat and the all-weather life boat. A visor to protect their eyes at sea because when you're moving really fast into salt water, it's just like having buckets of it thrown in your face constantly and salt water will burn your eyes, so if they need to uh, look out for people in the water or whatever, they must have adequate eye protection. One size helmet fits all, and inside it is a series of air bladders, so once you put it on, you can inflate the air bladders so the helmet's a nice tight fit, so we don't have to worry about buying lots of different sizes for different people. We're going to move now into the inshore lifeboat room, which is behind me. The inshore lifeboat is a D-class lifeboat. Uh, it weighs about three quarters of a tonne. It has a crew of three, although it can go out with two. It sits on a trolley in here and is launched by the troop crew pushing the trolley out and down the slipway and then is recovered by using the winch which you can see at the back of the room here. If we move to the front of the boat, I'll open the door to the slipway and you just have a look down back. The inshore lifeboat has its own separate slipway uh, which it can be used at all states of the time. That's alongside the all-weather lifeboat slipway, which you can see to the right there. If you walk out onto the grating here, then you can look, up, look back and have a look at our super new station. We're very proud of it, and thank you to everybody who's contributed to the cost of building it. We won't waste your money and uh, we'll use it to good effect. We're going to be open fairly soon. On the 8th of January, the station opens to the public for visits. If you've got a small family group, or if there's just a couple of you, just turn up at the station between 10 and 2 on Monday to Friday, or 10 till 4 on Saturdays and Sundays, and we'll have visit guides here ready to show you around. There's no charge for that. You've already paid for the station, so we'd like you to come over and look at it. Thanks a lot.